Let's go, folks. Time for the Gibby Show. How you doing, baseball fans? Welcome to another edition of the Gibby Show presented by Miller Lite, the official beer of Major League Baseball and the Gibby Show. I'm John Arezzi. Joining me, the two-time manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, member of the 1986 world champion New York Mets, number one best-selling book author, and the voice of the audio version of Gibby Tales of a Baseball Lifer, which releases everywhere on August the 8th. The man who always tells it like it is, direct from San Antonio, Texas, the baseball lifer himself, John Gibbons. Gibby, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good as always, pal. It's the uh, it's, like, it's the best time of year in baseball. You know, you get the trade deadline coming up. You know, you just had the All Star game. You know, the uh, the up and coming stars, the kids. You know, now it's you know now the teams are starting to separate themselves. There's two months left. If you can't if, if you can't get excited about all this, something's wrong. You know. Well, it was an extraordinary busy week, not only with the trade uh, deadline coming up, major news uh, for the Jays in so many different ways. So we have a really big show for everybody today. Uh, Obviously, uh, we'll talk about losing Jordan Romano uh, for now, but picking up another closer who arguably was the best available stopper. Uh, during the trading deadline. Also, uh, Big Brother's back with the Jays, back in the rotation. Uh, We'll discuss that news. There was also some stuff going on uh, Friday night's game with an intentional walk uh, that wasn't, and then a home run by Otani, and then some words exchanged in the dugout. So we're going to go over all of that. We also have a great gabbing with Gibby today, brought to you by Tim Hortons. We'll have a true workhorse and a huge part of the Toronto bullpen, none other than Eric Swanson with us, and we'll have our weekly roast and toast as well inspired by our friends at Miller Lite. But John, let's get right into the leadoff, uh, the Jays, uh, another big week coming up, a big week to just finish in the hot AL pennant race. Uh, They're inching closer. I mean, Baltimore Baltimore only has a game and a half lead lead in the division right now over Tampa Bay. Uh, The the Jays... uh, trail the O's uh, by five and a half. Uh, so, uh, and they're still up two and a half in the wild, wild card spot. They're tied with Houston for second place. Uh, but this week, the big series with Baltimore, big series with the Red Sox. Uh, I know you used the phrase uh, nut cutting time, uh, and it seems like there's been a lot of nut cutting weeks for the Jays, and this seems like another one. Oh, yeah, this is it. It's, it's, that, t- it's that time of year, and now it's uh... – now each team will get back to start playing more in the interdivision stuff, even though they cut back on the numbers. This is I can remember at the beginning of the season. I mean, our, our show at the beginning when the season started, uh, we're talking about well, you know, now they won't see the Yankees or the Red Sox or till for another couple months, whatever it was at the time. Well, now it's getting to be that time, and you know, it's the wild cards done wonders for the game. There's a lot of teams in it. Uh, Blue Jays are sitting in a uh, wonderful spot right now, and um, you know they they just made a nice couple de- couple deals. Heck, they they got a couple of relief pitchers there from the uh, Hicks and Cabrera from the Cardinals. You go, what are the Cardinals doing? Heck, the Cardinals could couldn't get anything going. They're sitting in the cellar over there, and they trade two of their better relievers. And uh, uh, yeah, so good things are happy. Tip your hat to the front office. Yeah, um, let's uh, let's get into that big trade that took place first and foremost. I mean, it was it was kind of like when when Romano was taken out of the game, and you're like, all right, here's a closer. You know, now he's had the back uh, situation, all-star game got removed, and now he's on the IL. And then, boom, you, right right, almost immediately afterwards, the Jays made a huge trade with the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, they get 26-year-old Jordan Hicks, five-year veteran who spent his entire career with the Cardinals. Jays had to give up two highly regarded pitching prospects, uh, with Adam uh, Klofenstein, Sam Robertsy, who was their number one prospect, uh, but uh, it was really an it was really kind of an exciting trade in a way to get uh, uh, to get the, uh, the the kind of the closer for St. Louis right into the pen now with Toronto. So, John, your assessment of this trade and uh, how important was it to bring a guy like uh, Hicks in right after Romano goes on the IL? Well, it was great. it's a great trade. 
you know, re- regardless. And then, you know, Jordy, I'm sure will be back. Uh, but that, but you know, when, when things, time means everything, right. And Jordan, you know, is back flared up in the all-star game. And then the other day that kind of forces your hand a little bit. So I'm sure the, it, the, the front office, Bronner goes, Hey, we got, we better do something quick before somebody else grabs this guy. Right. So it could, probably kind of expedited that a little bit. But all it's done is, is really make this, you know, a, a really good bullpen to begin with, even that much stronger. You know, it's, it's, hey, it's, don't even forget Chad Green's on the horizon. You know, one of the top relievers. You know, he's coming back from his Tommy John. And, yep. And, and we, we can't forget, leave out Cabrera, the, the lefty that uh, was having no a guy. tough time in St. Louis. And he, and he comes over, he's done a tremendous job. But that just shows you sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to figure this guy, the, Cabrera, who's struggling with the Cardinals, right? Throwing strikes, whatever it was. Sometimes it changes scenery. He does wonders, you know. Naturally, they're, they're, they couldn't be, have gotten with a better pitching coach than Pete Walker. But sometimes just a fresh air. It's kind of the atmosphere of St. Louis isn't real good, obviously, because it's a perennial contender that's the scuffling. So, yeah, yeah kudos to the uh, Blue Jays front office. Yeah, you, uh, you had said on a previous show that uh, the Jays needed to address the pen. And this was kind of an unconventional way uh, to get another closer in there. Uh, but you said they needed to address it. They addressed it. They have a stock pen, especially when Romano comes back. When Romano comes back, do you think the Jays will now have the strongest one-two punch uh, in the bullpen with these two top guys once Romano returns? Well, I look, I look at it this way. Even before you added him, right? They got a damn good bullpen, you know, one of yeah. the best in baseball, you know, and they can make that argument then. Now you add Hicks to that, you know, obviously he's got to pitch well. And, and like you just said, when Cabrera's already added to it, um, and maybe in Chad Green, you know, the the most important thing of this all is, is you know, you get to that time of year, we've talked about it. These guys starting to get fatigued, you know, they're getting used a lot, especially on the, you know, on, on the good teams. This will allow, you know, Schneider and, and that group to, you know, give these guys a little breathing room. You know, they, can't, they don't use them every day, or you know, and and the, so you could you could just keep bringing one one great young arm out of the bullpen right after another, right? And it, and it's it's a daunting task for the uh, you know the, the teams you're facing, and especially now in the day, the the way the game's analytics heavy, and you know they don't like the starters to go too too long. You you need you need more firepower, but but you, not only every team that's in it needs to dress their bullpen because it's that time of year and they're in their fatigue. They yeah, used I a mean, lot. And especially when you're using that pen a lot, and the starters don't go more than five or six mostly these days, so you're taxing that bullpen. I mean, even our guest today on Gabbing with Gibby, I mean, he's already been in over forty games uh, playing for uh, for the team this year, so we'll address that. Uh, and talk to uh, Swanson later. Uh, but another big thing happened, which is probably the most controversial uh, story uh, for the Jays this week. Obviously, this big series with the Angels. Otani is a feared hitter. Uh, on uh, Friday night, Matt Chapman uh, had some words with Jay Skipper John Schneider. Uh, it was on the first pitch to Otani. He hit a monster home run. It was, by the way, his third uh, home run in three consecutive at-bats dating back to his last series. Uh, But that home run uh, off of Kevin Gosman's fastball, it led to Chapman confronting Schneider uh, in the dugout. Now, and it was picked up by TV cameras. Chapman reportedly said to Schneider, quote, and I'll leave one of the words out, why did we pitch to him? He's the only blanking guy on the team that can hit. <laughs> was was Chapman out of line doing that to the skipper? Uh, hey, I love it, man. If you want to know the truth, I'm different than most, I, I would think. I've, I've had those things happen. I think what gets it really catches everybody off guard is Chapman doesn't seem like he's that kind of guy. He's kind of, you know, very reserved, uh, respectful guy. My my only thing is, you know, you better be careful in because uh, I'm going to get my pound of flesh back at you. That that's the only thing, you know. Uh, but you know, I've had those kind of things with Donaldson. You know, you just got to you got to understand the personalities. And there really is it's a it's a high, highly emotional, heavy testosterone age. In the it, the co- competition, you know, it's getting that time of year. They want to win it. There's pressure on all these guys. You know, there obviously there's probably something more to it that we know that, that caused that tension a little bit, maybe or something. I, I don't, I don't. That would be my guess, but you know, you live with it. It's, it's. Uh, I've had some, I have had some run-ins 
I regret that they happened, but you know what? I also understand why, why they happened. You know, as far as the strategy of it all, I totally understand where Chapman's coming from. They may have had a meeting before the game said, hey, we're not going to pitch this guy. But you also have Gosman, your top, you know, arguably your top pitcher on the team, right? Going with the All-Star game, you know, facing him in the, you know, there wasn't a, like a base open type thing. But he's got to make a better pitch. Say, hey, listen, let's not give him anything to hit. You know, right. if we fall behind, we'll walk him. Because he is, he's hotter on fire and he's the – He's on uh, fire. Yeah, but you know, the, you know, the crazy thing about it is, is uh, it's a smart strategy if you're trying to win, right? Uh, I, I was watching a show on um, baseball. They were talking about what, like, when Judge was going for his home run record, and everybody's pitching to him. It used to be those guys. Nobody, you know, but nobody they wouldn't pitch to Barry Bonds if they didn't. But it's it's good for the game to see these guys set records. And okay, well, wait, well, hold on, folks. This is about winning's the most important thing in this game. Not not some. Uh, you know, some some guy, uh, great athlete, trying to break a record. I, I get it all. But you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it was, but it was kind of, it, it was kind of interesting. Was, I mean, they they downplayed a little bit after the game in their press conferences, but uh, it was really interesting to see, and especially after Chappie hit that home run in the game, and he's circling the bases, he gets back to the dugout, and Schneider just kind of. All right, you know, give him a little high five and just look straight ahead, and and while everyone else is like celebrating, so there was well, a little- hey, maybe well, maybe Schneid said was in, under his breath, he, he, he was thinking, "Good thing you hit that home run, big boy." I guarantee, yeah, good thing boy. you hit that thing after all. <laughs> you know, it's it. I don't think people should get too too worked up over it. Other than, you know, I guarantee, you, or at least I hope things were said behind the, the closed doors after it was said yeah. and done, but. There's a lot on the line for these guys. There's, you know, there's, uh, there's obviously there was a lineup adjustment, batting order adjustment. Who knows what's affecting certain guys doing yeah. that? And 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 that it's it's not unusual for that to happen. Um, so hey, I'm big fans of both those guys. Yeah. I just hope Schneid Schneid got a little bit of uh, his pound of flesh too. I just hope. Well, I mean, uh, you know, everyone handles it differently, and I think every skipper would handle it differently. And, uh, you know, I know during your days with uh, the Donaldsons and some of the other situations that you had encountered as a big league skipper, um, you're you're a little bit more fiery in your ways, uh, but uh, everyone has their own different style. So I'm sure these guys handled it uh, in the clubhouse uh, after the game. And they both, uh, you know, made some good comments after that game. But what, what ironically happened a few days later during, uh, the Sunday, uh, uh, uh the game with, uh, the Saturday game rather with, uh, Manoa pitching is that Otani was walked intentionally. And after the game, uh, there were some comments made by, uh, Manoa saying that that wasn't his decision to, uh, intentionally walk, uh, Otani. And then Schneider had his press conference and said mockingly, he's glad he took Chappie's lead on that call. So they made light of it a little bit, but it was still carried over over the till the next game. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and, and these guys. One thing you could say, at least from the outside looking in, and everything you hear, they they, they got a tight club, right? Everybody gets along, yeah. they function well, and they're playing good baseball, right? The best record since June. Since right? June in a major. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're doing so many things right. This is what happens in in sports, profession at the highest level when you're together every you know every single day. You'll flip on basketball games and teammates are fighting on the bed, or you go to football games or watch the NFL. That's just kind of way it is sometimes, you know. You know, people will never know the full story. Obviously, um, it's kind of like politics; you never know the full story. You never right? know the full never, story. Never, never. But they, they they'll be fine. But it, it is good, nice that they can make a little little joke about it like that, uh, because it is a is a seems like a close team. It's not necessarily required, but that's uh, this, this is a pretty pretty good group. They look like a pretty good group. Uh, staying with pitching a little bit and staying with that uh, Saturday game, there was a very scary moment that took place. Manoa hit Angels outfielder Tail Ward in the face uh, with a slider in the fifth inning of a scoreless game. Uh, Ward uh, was taken off the field. Uh, Manoa really looked uh, shaken up. Uh, it was later revealed that uh, Ward sustained fractures of the nose and the face. He'll be out for an indefinite time right now. Uh, at that point, uh, Manoa had pitched four scoreless innings, uh, and then Schneider came out and took a what it looked like a shaken Manoa out of the game at that point. Uh, so I think uh, I'd like to get your opinion on it, John, but that was kind of a good move, getting Alec out of that game at that time. Well, I mean, that's hey, I 
I, I don't comment on. I don't. Com- you know, I don't comment on too many moves a lot of times because I've been in that seat and there's there's yeah. so much that goes into it. Um, you know, they. Uh, you know, Alex. You know, Alex seemed to be coming back to his old old self. You know that, that that's the important thing. Yeah. But anytime you hit a guy, you know, you never know if it rattles a guy or whatever. But obviously they had somebody warming up anyway in case he got into trouble. Just in case, because you, you know, to lose the plate a little bit. I mean, he had walked a previous guy. It was an, an intentional walk. He hit another batter as well. So, uh, but but uh, that's, I guess, you know, you as you're saying, Gibby, I mean, you see that with a pitcher because no one wants to hit somebody else. I mean, really, no. when, you, when, you, when you hit somebody else and, and it shakes you up no matter who you are. You could be anybody. It'll shake you up. Oh, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, those kind of things don't happen that often, but they, but they do in the become are serious injuries. And, you know, you just hope he bounces back. And yeah. uh, the guy you got to worry about is, is it Ward that, and, you know, that yes. it does affect him when he comes back, when he steps back in that box. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the game. It's a bad part of the game. But, uh, you know, Alec definitely wasn't trying to do it. Um, no, absolutely not. No. You know, uh, so. but yeah, it was just kind of scary to see, and uh, uh, and uh, we hope that obviously uh, uh, that recovery is quick. Uh, we're going to go back and talk about something that's kind of a cool thing that's happening for the Jays, and that is uh, uh, Ryu is back, Big Brother is back, and I didn't realize that his name uh, actually meant Big Brother in Korean until I kind of researched it, but that's what it means. He'll make his first start against Baltimore, returns from his second Tommy John, uh, which has kept him out since June the 1st, 2021. Uh, interesting now, John, with Ryu coming back, the Jays are now going to employ a six-man rotation beginning with Ryu's start on uh, Tuesday against the O's. They play a stretch of 17 games in 17 days, uh, and then they have a few off days in the middle of the month. At that time, they can go back to a five-man rotation if they choose to. What does Ryu's return after such a long time mean to the Jay staff? And are the Jay starters and rely, uh, relievers now the most reliable parts on the team? Gosh, they're, they're good. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, one of the best rotations in the game. It's one of the best bullpens in the game, right? Uh, once again, things go back to Pete Walker. Pete Walker always has that knack. You know, his, his, his groups always seem to do that. Obviously, there's more to it than just Pete because he's got some great coaches around him. And Schneid's making some good decisions, you know, on how to use these guys. But it's uh, but if you're going to win, you you got to have pitching. That's the old adage forever, right? And that's yes. what they're doing and making some some key additions. And uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you can expect out of Ryu, other than you know his, his rehab starts have been good. Um, but you know, this is still the big leagues. It's a, it's a uh, you know against the top team in your division. It, you know, it may take him a, a start or two to get back on track, uh, or he, you know, he may come right out of the gates and pitch like the old guy, or he may he may not have it a whole year. You you never know. You know, there's a lot of anticipation in, in the, but they get they got some good. Fo- they they were probably begging to get him back at the, before the season started because you know they they were weren't sh- where they had a couple question marks. Now that whole road uh, that everybody coming through that one through five gives you a chance to win every night. Yeah, the depth is certainly there for sure. And with Ryu coming back, that gives him more depth. And then, of course, uh, you got uh, guys that have been out for injury. I mean, the number one uh, pitching prospect uh, for the team is also on his way back. I mean, that'll be a next year deal. So it looks like, wow. I mean, the Jays are loaded up with, on their pitching side. Uh, so it uh, looks like. Nice, gonna- Jay. Nice. You know, we, we get, a lot of times you got to you got to give credit where it's due. Nice job, Ross Atkins, in his in his group. You know, you, you uh, they take they take a lot of heat up there. You know, they do. Uh, they do. Yeah, you know, I'm giving them a little heat, and they give me a little heat. But you know, hey, you got you got to salute them when they do th- when good things, and uh, they've done some great things. Absolutely, and uh, as you've said before, you know, it's good for you to sit in that chair now as uh, kind of a you know, this analyst fan sitting in your own. An room. armchair quarterback, man. Armchair hey, armchair quarterback. quarterback. You do that every day of the week, right? It's easy stuff, man. Yes, it is. You are listening to The Gibby Show, presented by our friends at Miller Light And, John, uh, as that armchair quarterback that you are, uh, enjoying some Miller Lights. And uh, I did see that you were out there enjoying one while you were digging a ditch in your front yard. <laughs> What's going on with that? Ain't no job too small. What do you think this is, man? <laughs> You know, I, I was I did that for two two summers in high school. You know what? Hey, I, I, it, 
a, a plant. I got a new plant, a, a little tree I'm planting out there. So I had to go out and do it. And I had some uh, Miller uh, Miller Light with me. You know, some yeah. of the best electric lights you can have. You know, when you're out here so in this 110 degree heat. You know, so that was kind of my incentive. I put it over there on the sitting on this rock. To get me through to this, you know, I wasn't you're drinking it while I was at working. That ice cold can of Miller Light while you're digging, yeah. like, all right. I, mean, I would, I would, well, I, w- I wouldn't recommend on the job doing that, but but it's kind of okay. I, as soon as I finish this stuff, I can go have that and, and, have a and cool watch one. the uh, and watch the Blue Jays they, and as they beat the uh, Angels that day. There you go. Smart. Yes. Corner booths, sticky floors, weekdays that feel like weekends. You never forget the way some things taste. Miller Lite. Great taste, 90 calories. Tastes like Miller time. Well, we have uh, another topic to talk about, and that's another pretty big story for the Jays. And it looks like Whit Merrifield has officially taken over the leadoff spot in the Jays lineup as uh, George Springer's struggles continue. Are you good with this change, John? Yeah, you know what? You know, not being in the clubhouse in, in, being hands on things like that, you got to make some tough decisions sometimes, right? And you know what? They they chose to while while spring is is cooled off and scuffling right now, put Whit up there who's been on fire, right? Eventually, I think that that's Springer's job. That's what he was brought in to do. Spring ain't gonna stay cold forever, you know. That's just not gonna happen. He's, he's too good a hitter. He's he's not over the hill, no. But you, you can you uh you can remember too back it was in World Series when. Uh, AJ Hitch was his manager down there in Houston. He was struggling at the time, and he, he said, "No, he's my leadoff guy. He's going to stick in there." Mm-hmm. And he got, ended up winning. It might have been the year he won the MVP, I think. Right? So that's uh, he's he's going to rise to the occasion. It's it's a uh, it's it's salute and wit. Say, hey, hey, nice job, kid. Go up there and do it. To hit, you know, wit. time will tell. Yeah, yeah, time will tell whether it's not. But you know, you can't go wrong with either one of those guys up no. there. You know, you but but I I. People need to stick by George Springer. He's, been, he's done it too long, and he's not over the hill, and he's gonna uh, he's gonna bounce back, and that, then you're then you're gonna be that much stronger. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's definitely something to ta- keep uh, watching. But uh, as you said, Springer is a perennial leadoff guy, and he's uh, had great moments, and I'm sure he'll have more of those. That will wrap up the leadoff. Now it's time for Gabbing with Gibby, brought to you by Tim Hortons. Have you tried the new smoky honey bacon breakfast sandwiches from Tim's yet? Sweet and savory glaze, new double smoked bacon, and a freshly cracked Canadian egg. They're delicious, and they're a twist on your breakfast faves. Try one at participating Tim Hortons restaurants in Canada for a limited time. That sounds incredibly delicious. (laughs) Hey, you're like me, dude. We like to eat. You know uh what? Exactly. If you like to eat, hey, Tim Hortons will have something for you. I can guarantee you that. Today on Gabbing with Gibby, brought to you by Tim Hortons, we bring on one of the true workhorses in the majors. He was obtained by the Blue Jays in November of last year from Seattle for Teoscar Hernandez to be part of the 2023 Jays so far this year. He's competed in 49 games for the Jays in the top three of all pitchers in the game for games played. He's pitching to a 3.51 ERA, currently two wins, two saves for Toronto. It's our pleasure to welcome Jays reliever Eric Swanson. Eric, welcome to Gabbing with Gibby. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, Swanny, man, we've been looking forward to this, man. You know what? Hey, you're tough to get get a hold of you know i mean it's like the uh i, I but i actually my access to get a hold of these guys i, I go through moose man the, the clubby and then if not i go and try to get in and dropolis out there and then uh pete walker sometimes bp tells me he's too busy scouting and i say really come on you got good pictures man don't be <laughs> don't don't overcomplicate this way so anyway but it, it's good it's good to have you on here so fire away johnny yeah, I mean, uh, obviously a big part of the Jays' pen. Uh, lots of moves being made. A big trade yesterday with the acquisition of Jordan Hicks uh, and then the eventual return of uh, uh, Jordan Romano. Um, let's get your opinion first and foremost on the trade and acquisition of Hicks. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm excited, and I think, you know, most everybody is going to probably say the same. I mean, just hearing guys around the clubhouse, everybody's excited about it. 
I would say, especially the bullpen, um, you know, he's going to be a, a big, you know, guy to have in or have down there for uh, this last two months. Um, and then so on after that. So he's going to be huge for us down there for sure. Definitely excited to have him. Hey, yeah, with- you know what? Hey, Rook, you're going to thank, thank you very much, man, for picking up. A- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He'll, uh, he'll help lighten the load a little bit, which would be good. <laughs> You know, with the acquisition of Hicks, I mean, the depth in the bullpen now, uh, obviously, uh, it's really deep. When Romano gets back and everyone's at full strength, uh, do you think that the Jays have the best bullpen in the game as you head down into the stretch? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think we're one of the top ones that are out there. I think before this this move, I think we were already one of the, the top bullpens out there. I mean, you look what a handful of our guys have done um, throughout the season and, and the type of leverage arms that we have. Um, and even the guys that have come up, you know, for, for short stints that have kind of filled in for, for a little bit um, have done extremely well. I mean, you look at Cabby right now, who we just got, you look at Jay, you know, both of those guys are, are running with it. Um, and when you can get guys to do that, along with kind of having the consistency of the rest of the bullpen, you know, it puts you in as good of a situation as you could possibly be in. And now with Hicks coming over here, that's just one more high leverage arm that we got coming this way that is going to be huge for us. Hey, I want to know how the Cardinals, for crying out loud, they can't win a game over there. And now you guys take two of the relievers and they come over here and they're going to thrive with you guys. Hey, that's it. That's just, that's, there's more, obviously there's more to a game than just bullpen guys, but hey, uh, hey, so, Swanee, when you you originally drafted by the Texas Rangers, correct? Yep. And then then you then you spent some time with the Yanks before you went to Seattle. Is that how it all worked? Yeah, traded to New York in sixteen, and then traded to Seattle off season eighteen. Okay, and then uh, you, you spent a few years there, and then uh, hey, you the, the, you had the playoffs last year. They didn't even pitch in the play. Did they pitch in? The, well, you pitched a game against Houston, right? Yep. What were they thinking? No wonder they couldn't advance for crying out loud. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely um, I guess frustrating at certain times. Um, not throwing, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, my job is to stay ready for when my name is called, and um, <clears throat> it was called uh, the last game against Houston and Seattle. Um, went in and did my job, and then tried to give us the best possible chance to to win that one and go to game four. But unfortunately, I think we lost that one at like 18 innings, something like that. Oh yeah, man. We were, we were all watching. That, that was good. Hey, I, I was teasing with you, man, but you know what? Uh, I, I have some friends that work over the, with the, in Seattle. They, they, the people raved about you. And then, like I said, I talked to Pete Walker and all that. And, you know, when I saw that transaction, cause you know, all you gotta do is look at your numbers you had in Seattle. When, when I th- saw the Blue Jays pick, picked you up, I thought, what a great move, right? Because you can never have you can never have enough bullpen arms. I mean, you, you get you guys. It's pro, it's the hardest job on the team as far as what's expected out of you, right? It's almost like you're a, uh, some like a manager finds a great toy, right? And when you when you're good like you are, man, they ride you, right? It's so so it's physically it's a tough it's a tough job. And I used to notice there used to be almost it was almost cyclical, right? That when it when a reliever is good. That year, man, they ride him, and you, and you you pitch all the time. The next year, it was almost like a little bit of tail uh, it tails off a little bit because you got used so much the year before, and then it kind of it just kind of it's like this. So, so I don't think people understand or appreciate the value of a bullpen guy, and they think, well, well, this guy ought to be pitching every night. Well, damn, you damn damn near do, but it's. Do you agree with me? I mean, it's it's is it tough to get to get that old arm cranking some nights down there? Yeah, for sure. Um... You know, I think you look at guys that that stay in the league for, for you know, seven, eight, nine years as a as a bullpen guy, and and they're consistent. You know, that's one of the hardest things to do to do that from year to year to put up you know sixty plus outings a year um, and have success each and every year. Um, you know, there's so much movement within a bullpen, pretty much wherever you go. Um, 
you know, if you're not doing what you need to be doing to help the team win, then it's a pretty easy spot to kind of replace, which is, uh, the, I guess, the uneasy part about the job. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you can go out there and, and get outs and help your team win ball games, you're going to have a job for a while. Um, biggest thing, just taking care of your body, make sure that even if you feel like crap one day, then next day you're you're there. Um, you can still go out and try to get some outs. Yeah, it's a game. It's a for a good bullpen. It's a game. It's really a game of survival, right? Because because so many times you go out there, you know, and you you're running on fumes. This is the kind. This is the time of year too, where it starts to catch up with you. You know, you got like 40, 48, 49 appearances, and there's still a couple months left. In good winning teams, bullpens get used a lot in this analytic age. Where they, uh, I don't want to say baby the starters, but they, 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 they protect the starters, or they, or they yank them automatically because you know a number might say this when the game might dictate something else. I always joke with people all the time. You know, the manager goes out because I used to do it, and Schneid does it. Take out that starter. You guys are going out down there going, oh. <laughs> Hey, hey, don't forget us down here, Skip, for crying out loud. You know, the guy's the guy hadn't given up a run, but he's coming third time through the lineup. You're going, oh my gosh. <laughs> a little bit shorter leashes nowadays. Um, yeah, you you're starting to see it. I mean, you know, you look at the numbers of the game, I guess, um, throughout the entire league, and you're seeing starters that are coming out that third time through the order. It's pretty common now to to see a manager go out and pull that starter and go straight to the bullpen. Um, and I think that's kind of going to be the new normal. You get some old yeah. school pitchers that are still in the game that that uh, maybe voice their uh, displeasure with it. Um, <laughs> like Chris Bassett. Chris Bassett, you try to pull him in, in the fifth, six innings at, at 80 pitches, um, that's, that's a tough one to, to try to do. Um, because he's going to want to grind out that outing. He's going to want to go his hundred pitches no matter what. Um, and that's kind of, uh, fading away from the game a little bit. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, and, and I think most starters, you'd be asked, if they understand too, even if they're, they're off that day or, or down a few runs, they, they want to get, they want to give you that extra innings for you guys down that pen too. I mean, that's, that's part of it. You know what they these guys got to come suck it up for me every time I'm out here. Let me, hey, let me wear it one night so we can give those guys a break. We're down a few runs anyway. You know what? That's that, that kind of thing. That's you know it, it, that that's part of being on a good team. Now you get on bad teams and you get everybody kind of, kind of goes their own way and it's like the heck with that guy down there, man. Let him wear it. I've I've given up enough earnings tonight. One of the, one of those deals. So yeah. yeah. Introducing the new Smoky Honey Bacon Breakfast Sandwiches at Tim's. With a sweet and savory glaze made with 100% Canadian honey, new double smoked bacon, and a freshly cracked Canadian egg. Try a twist on your breakfast faves with our new Smoky Honey Bacon Breakfast Sandwiches at Tim's. Hey, so all right, let me let me ask you a question, because uh, Pete Walker, Pete, Pete says you guys are a really tight group, the, the bullpen, right? He said you guys, is it like, is it like a group, you guys all, are your lockers all near each other in the um, in the clubhouse and everything? You guys like yeah, we're all on one night? side of the yeah, we're all on one side of the clubhouse. It's uh, a whole line of us. Um, I'm next to to Meza. Romano's on the other side of Meza. Um, I got Cabby next to me now, and then Yimmy on the other side of him, um, and then some guys down on the other side of Romano. But yeah, we're all next to each other. But yeah, our bullpen man, we we have a really uh, tight knit group. Um, I think you could kind of see it right away in spring training, <clears throat> you know, me being the new guy coming over this year, um, kind of went towards like Meza and Romano, um, Richard, Simber, all super welcoming. Um, we kind of all just got tight pretty quick. Uh, so that translating into the season, I think is, is a huge kind of step right away at being able to be tight with everybody and, and not having, anybody in our bullpen that's really selfish. I think that's kind of the cool thing as well is you got everybody willing to pitch in pretty much any role. Um, nobody's too big for for uh, what role that they're throwing in, which I think is really cool. We're all willing to go down there and pitch whenever we need to pitch. Um, and that's a, that's a huge thing to have. I think that's why, you know, we're having the success we are. Oh, yeah. You know, you know what? You're right. You guys, you guys are unselfish. 
and even not even being up there, I watch some games on TV, but it's you, there, there's you, you can tell there's something. There's a good bunch of guys, you know. My last year when I was up there in Toronto, I had Timmy Mays that was just breaking in, you know, and and I know Jordan Romano, so I know the character of the guys, you know. That's important because you don't get that everywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like it's like for example, you you could be a closer in Major League Baseball right now. I mean, that's not that's not your job. That down the road, that may be your job. But you're you're the kind of guy that. You can come in. You come in any any time they call on you, right? Because you're everybody can't do that. A lot of guys take. I, I, I see you as one guy. Correct me if I'm wrong. One of those guys that and hey, they call, man. Boom! I get ready quick. You know what? Just just call me. I don't need. I just need X amount of things and, and put me in. Just typical. The other night in the in the you came in the seventh inning, bases loaded, no outs, in a in a tight ball game, right? And you a couple mm-hmm. punch outs and a fly ball or something. I think. You know, everybody can't do that. I think everybody expects a guy out to be able to do that but but not everybody can do that not everybody is, is even even wants to do that all the time because it used to be guys and i'm sure this still is they wanted their roles defined right they say well can, can you tell me what my role is yeah yeah an idea we used to do that in in the but now it's kind of like it's hey when you get a good team when you get so many talented guys it's like hey just be ready because we may you know, there's no more specialists. You got to face one hitter. You can change something. So the rules have kind of changed some things a little bit too. But um, do you see yourself? It, 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 is the ultimate dream that you be your closer someday, or is that even meant to your, in your mind? Because I, I mean, there's no doubt you could do that. Um. Yeah. I mean, obviously, every every reliever wants to to be in that in that role at some point. Um, but for right now, you know, it's kind of one of those things, like even having conversations in spring with, with Pete and with Jeff about my role, I kind of joked around with them from the get go. Like, I don't really care. Like I'm going to be ready in the fifth inning every night. If you need me to come in the fifth, third time through, I'm going to come in the fifth, third time through. If you need me, need me to come in and face a pocket of lefties, if Mesa is not available, then that's what I'm going to do. If you need me to come in the eighth, to get Romano that save, keep the game where it's at. That's what I'm going to do. Um, for me, it, it, as long as I'm put in a situation um, that's going to help dictate the outcome of a game, to me, that's that's all I really care about. Um, and my job is to go out there and keep the game exactly where it's at, whether we're up or if we're down one run. Um, and I think as long as I keep doing that, I'm going to play this game for a long time and I'll have opportunities down the road to do either the same thing or, or, or something else. Um, so that's kind of been my thought process over the last, probably this year and last year. Um, I think if you would have asked me a couple of years ago, I, I probably would have told you, you know, I want to be pitching in meaningful innings type of thing, which, which everybody does. Uh, right. But I think those meaningful innings are a lot they kind of they go outside of just the eighth and ninth inning of, of games that most people don't understand. Um, so that's kind of the approach I've taken with it over the last couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Because the, the game could be decided in that sixth, seventh inning, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, then next, you never. Then it doesn't matter. You don't. You don't get to those. You know, the eighth and the ninth. Okay, Johnny, what do you got for him before we got to let him go get to work here in a minute? All righty. I mean, uh, when the trade went down in November and you found out you were being traded to uh, Toronto. Uh, did it surprise you? And give me some of your thoughts and feelings about um, that trade when it happened. Yeah, uh, it, it actually really surprised me. Um, I was actually in Montana at the time on a mule deer hunt. Uh, I had zero cell phone reception and just happened to to go in a spot where I got a little bit of cell phone coverage. And I looked at my phone and I had however many missed calls and text messages uh, so I had to actually drive about 10, 15 miles away to where I could get some reception to call uh, <laughs> Justin Hollander back. And I pretty much knew at the time, you know, you get that many missed calls and, and text messages, you know what's going on. Um, and I called him back and, you know, asked him where to. And he said Toronto. And and I think right away it was kind of like a, a sigh of relief knowing I'm going somewhere that's got a really but good ball club um and then the second thing i asked him was who is it for and he said tay oscar um and it's it's cool to see you know you you go in somewhere for also you know really good player in, in exchange yeah. means that the ball club really wants you part of their team yeah big popular player as well and you recently returned back to seattle as a jay uh 
talk about the fan base of Toronto in comparison to the fan base of Seattle. Uh, and, and how has your experience been uh, being a Toronto Blue Jay so far during this 2023 season? Yeah, I mean, you know, I went through a few different phases when I was in Seattle. Uh, when I first came into the league in 19, um, you know, we weren't very good. 20, we weren't very good. Um, and then obviously COVID, we didn't have fans anyways, but you see kind of the fans. Seattle's got a great fan base. Um, 19, it was a little tough at times because ballpark wouldn't be exactly full. Um, and then I got to kind of live the end of 21 when we made that wild card push as Toronto was doing the same. We both went into that last day having a chance to do it. And that last homestand in, in Seattle was, was awesome. Fans were great. And then last year, obviously, you know, we, we broke the drought there and, and we had great support all year. So that was really my first taste of, of a really supportive fan base. <clears throat> and then I remember coming here for the wild card series last year and not being able to hear the guys that I was sitting next to in the bullpen because this place was so damn loud. Um, so when I got traded, that was automatically the first thing that I thought of was how ridiculous this fan base was. Um, and it's, it's lived up to it every bit. I mean, we have almost a packed house every single night, whether it's a Tuesday or if it's a Saturday, um, it's, it's something very special that a lot of people don't understand unless you've actually been a part of this organization. Uh, I've seen it a little bit in Seattle when Toronto would come in the past, you know, it's, it's, it's a little weird when you go out there and you see mostly Royal blue out there. Um, yeah. as a home player and then getting to to relive that but being on this side of it now uh, last week when we were in Seattle was was awesome um, the support down there I mean you got an entire country that's behind one team uh, and the, I mean the fan base is just it's out of this world and it's so fun to be a part of yeah it's pretty it's, it's it's a cool it's a cool experience man hey well, and you came back in a visiting uniform in Seattle man you got you got out of that big jam too I know you're feeling that. That was kind of one of those. Hey, yeah, take that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, both series we played against them this year, I, I was able to come in in some pretty big situations um, and and get out of it. And you know, obviously, you love that regardless. But but being against your former team makes it a little bit sweeter for sure. Uh, you know, hey, Swanee, that's your reputation, man. Big jams, big big spots. You're the guy they want, you know. That's, that's I'm just not from me witnessing. I, you know, I, I hear from people that matter. You know, they, they they tell me you're that kind of guy. Well, all right, man. Well, Johnny, you got anything else for him before we let him go get to work? You got a big no, I, 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 I don't. It's been a pleasure, really, to to meet you and talk to you and uh, continued success. And we hope that uh, at the end of the season, you get deep into the playoffs and you could really see what the fans at the Rogers Center can do. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun last two months for sure as we make this push. Um, I appreciate you guys for having me on. This was awesome. Hey, what's what? I gotta ask you, what time stretch today? Three forty-five. You get, uh, Pete says you're always out there leading stretch. First one out there is that? Uh... I am always the first one out there. Uh, <laughs> Mesa always Mesa's always the last one out there. Him, he is for crying out loud, boy. He's changed because when he first showed up, man, he he was like at the, he's on that field five hours before anybody else was supposed to. You gotta let him know. You gotta let him know he needs to be early today. Oh gosh. Hey, well, Swanee, best of luck, man. We appreciate you coming on here, man. You're doing a great job. Keep it up, and and uh, we're proud of you guys up there. Say hello to everybody, will you? Yeah, we'll do. I appreciate it. All right, pal. Good luck. Gibby, another great uh, Gabby with Gibby, and uh, that was another great guest. My goodness, man. I mean, uh, great insights uh, from somebody that's an integral part of the Jays' bullpen. Hey, you know, guys, Johnny, guys like Swanee are huge to a bullpen, right? He's got the stuff. He could, he could be a closer, you know, if somebody gave him that opportunity, right? But he's also he's, he's that guy that's so versatile. He can come in earlier in the games. You know, he's good with guys on coming in with guys on base. You know, even the game, even the game they 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 coughed up a lead the other night in Seattle. I mean, the balls were the balls weren't even leaving the infield. You know, sometimes he, so he's he's gonna give he's gonna be able to roll some double plays, all that good stuff, and he can get some strikeouts. And, and uh, you need guys like him 
Not, I'm not just saying he's got he's got a good arm. He's got all those things, but they, they're versatile, they're durable, all those kind. If, if you're if you're ever going to win, you know, he may not be the closer that title, even though he could do that. But you can rely on him anytime up and down the line. You know, bridge the gap, whatever you need, and 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 you can count on him. Yeah, true workhorse uh, uh, for the Jays, absolutely. And now, inspired by our friends at Miller Lite, it's time for this week's roast and toast. Uh, Gibby, this uh, first one is a little difficult. Um, you know my fandom with the New York Mets, my lifetime uh, passion for the New York Mets. Uh, you mean but, 300, $350 million doesn't buy you what it used to or what? Uh, well, there's also the luxury tax that's put up on top of that. So that made it over $450 million. Uh, Well, if you're one of the richest men around, I mean, what the heck? Who cares? Hey, hey, listen, quit your whining. I, I, I salute the owner, man, for, you know, wanting to win. You know, you, you wish there were a few more. There was more of them in the game. A lot of them necessarily, I don't, they, of course they want to win, but not like this guy does, right? And uh, it, throws, it throws things out of whack, but but it also proves the point that you can't always buy things, right? And now they've kind of they've kind of switched. Now they're going to focus on the farm system. And, and, you know, too, players get older, man. You know, they, they, they do. You know, they um, traded Scherzer. Scherzer's not going to be what he was a few years ago. He can't. Nobody on earth. Nobody could ever ever could be right because he's Scherzer, he starting to age. Scherzer, he's a lot of easy. Scherzer, Hall of Fame pitcher. Credentials are there. But here's a guy that really couldn't win the big game for the Mets. I mean, he provided great leadership in the clubhouse for sure, but he couldn't win the big game. Uh, and uh, probably one of the smartest financial guys in the game with Scott Boris as his agent. I mean, the guy's making fifty million dollars this year, still getting paid fifteen of it from Washington, and then the Mets, in order to complete this trade with Texas, uh, they are sending Texas thirty-six million dollars to cover most of his uh, guaranteed option because he opted in for twenty twenty-four. So Max is a smart guy, but it is a sad roast when you see a team kind of selling parts off. They're not. Uh, rebuilding, as they say, but uh, we got to roast the Mets for just kind of picking apart and and uh, and getting rid of so many guys that everyone thought was going to lead them to a championship. Yeah, Sad. but but well, basically last year, other than bringing in Verlander, you know, you won a hundred games last year. You just got you know the Padres knocked you out, but uh, you know, there's so much parity in the league. You can't be good every year, but it, the focus swings to you, spotlight swings to you when you spend that kind of money. Now it really uh, turns to the GM for acquiring these guys, thinking this was going. That's yeah. that's that's where the that's where the pressure got, you know. And then uh, he's getting and, killed. And Buck, in the press. And Buck and Buck and sit over Buck show one to go. Hey, you signed these guys. I didn't, man. I'm- <laughs> Buck doesn't say much about anything. Buck keeps his mouth shut even at press conference. I can't comment on that. That's not official. Yeah. And everybody knew it was, and all the players are talking about it. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, for Met fans looking at it, the Met fans always say, why can't we have nice things? <laughs> we nice. Well, you know, he got an owner that's, that's going to try, I'll tell you He's that. Gonna try. He's going to try. Give him credit. He's going to try. But that's uh, that's a roast. But we have a very inspiring Toast of the week, John, and uh, uh, and and we're going to uh, toast Jay Jackson. I mean, he's been going through an incredibly hard time, working hard uh, for the Jays, a saving grace in the bullpen in a lot of ways over the past month. Uh, but he's battling uh, something personal. I mean, he's got a, uh, a child in uh, a premature baby. Uh, so, I mean, he's going through a lot right now, and we got to toast him just for uh, being so strong, pitching while worrying about his uh, premature baby in the hospital. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, our thoughts and prayers are, you know, out there for him. It's, it's, uh, uh, you know, my, my new wife, Christy, has, had twins, and, and they were both born four months premature, you know, yeah. in, in, uh, so I, I I hear that story all the time, and, and medicine and everything's so good nowadays that uh, I'm sure everything's going to turn out fine. But you know, we got to salute him too. You know, he, he's uh, it hasn't been an easy career for him to get to the top, and now he's no. dealing with that back home, and he's in the and he's been tremendous. He was a guy that they gave up that home run to Judge. Remember when he went back to the Judge cheating? Yes. You know, and uh, I can remember we were talking at the time. He okay, he. he they're, st- they're still in the sign. It affects him because he gets sent down not long after that. You go, you just hope he gets back. 
he'll be good. You know, somebody else cheating on him, and and uh, uh, and, he, and he's back, and he's dealing. You know what? It's uh, he he's can dealing. tell he's a strong guy, and it's 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 gonna gonna be a very happy ending for him, for him and his family. Well, definitely a, a well deserved toast of the week to Jay Jackson. Corner booths, sticky floors, weekdays that feel like weekends. You never forget the way some things taste. Miller Lite, great taste, 90 calories. Tastes like Miller time. And that will wrap up this edition of the Gibby Show. It's going to be another big week upcoming. Uh, We're going to cover it all here on the next edition. This is John Arezzi. We will talk more baseball with you next week. So have a great week, everybody, and go Blue Jays.